Welcome. This video is about understanding the wind power device testing setup. It's actually one of two videos. In one, this video, we're going to be discussing the test stand components, um, what each part does, what kind of parts you need in the test stand. In another video, we'll be talking about making a simple one for use for testing at a school. The wind power testing stand has three component parts. There's the box fan, there's a voltmeter that you see in red in the bottom corner of the picture, and then there's that imposing looking test stand itself. And the test stand has a motor generator, a spindle wheel to attach the CD and a resistor. And we're gonna talk about each component part of that. But let's see what we're looking at here. This is the actual VASO tournament test apparatus. So the blade assembly, which again is the green CD with the white blades, and that's the part that the team brings to the tournament, is attached to the arm on a test stand. The arm's coming out at us in the picture. It's a little hard to get perspective from that. In this view, the blade assembly is vertical and aimed straight at the fan. However, um, the test stand arm on the VASO test stand can be moved up and down to change its height. It can be rotated to change the angle of the blade to the fan. And of course, the stand can be slid back and forth to change how close it is to the fan and whether it's centered on the fan or not. So the team will have the opportunity to move the test stand around and adjust it so that their blade is optimally placed in relation to the fan. So now let's look at each of the component parts. So the fan. It needs to be a two-speed, 20-inch box fan. And you can see in this slide, this is what a box fan looks like. This is not a box fan. And it's important to make sure that you're using a box fan because the airflows are very different on the two types of fans. You can find box fans very affordably online, at Walmart, at hardware stores. They're very standard. You just Google 20-inch box fan. In the previous picture, I'm going to go back to that for a second, you saw that our stand is actually mounted on a wood piece. That is not required for you to be practicing at home. You can just prop your fan up on some books to make sure that it's high enough to have the airflow aimed at the blade. The voltmeter or multimeter. We will have, if you're unfamiliar with these, we also have a video that you can watch to become more familiar with them and also maybe how to choose or select or buy one. But any voltmeter will do. We find that there are two extra features that are very useful in wind power. One is the max hold, min hold function. And what that does is um, it causes the voltmeter to remember the largest and the smallest voltages it's seen over a period, which means that you don't have to be staring at the screen as the voltage jumps around trying to remember what the max or the min was. And the reason you need both the max and the min is because sometimes the voltage is negative depending on the direction the blade spins. So, um, so if it's spinning one way, and the voltages are negative, you want to take the smallest or the min voltage, um, and that is your maximum because you're taking the absolute value of the voltage. It doesn't matter if it's negative or positive, which way it spins. Another useful thing about uh, the voltmeter, if you have the opportunity, is maybe buying a, an extra pair of leads, and that's the wires that go from the meter to the stand. If you get a pair that clip on, those are really nice. You don't have to hold them against the circuit. So you can just clip them onto the circuit and let go as your device is testing. All right, now let's look at that, that scary part, the test stand parts. To wire a test stand, you need a spindle to attach a CD, a resistor, and that's the white block by the yellow connector, that's number two and the motor or slash generator, which is the gray piece attached to the black spindle wheel in this picture. A spindle wheel is that part in a CD player that you snap a CD onto. And to find a spindle wheel, all you have to do is search 
we, we look, it says search spindle wheel, you want that in quotes, CD, DVD. It has to be a spindle wheel though, that, that a CD snaps onto. There's really two kinds, right? In the, in the very flat CD players, you may just place the CD onto a spindle wheel and close the top and it's the top that holds the CD in place. So you need one of these ones that either has the little spring or the ball attachments that you can see there. And because remember that the spindle wheel is on its side. And if you don't have the ability to snap the CD on, it won't stay on. Uh, it'll just slide off of one of these. So make sure, and, it, and you can just see that in the pictures of anything that you would order. For the motor and spindle wheel assembly, for the motors, you're going to search for CD, DVD, spindle, motor. And sometimes, oftentimes, the spindle and motor can be found together, like in this bottom picture here. In the top picture, that's just what the motor looks like by itself. If you buy the parts separately, they typically go together just with a push. You can also get them by cannibalizing an old CD player. That's easy to do. You just keep removing screws until you get to this motor and spindle wheel part. Be careful not to damage the spindle wheel though. That's, um, that's a fragile piece. And again, make sure that you're getting one that has like the little spring or those little ball bearings to snap a CD onto. The test stand has to have a resistor. Now, you might wonder why that is. It's actually, it's really critical. It takes the place of whatever the wind turbine would be powering. And if you don't put a resistor in the circuit, your blade is gonna to spin too freely. It will spin too easily and it gives you a false sense of confidence in how well your blade is doing. We saw blades, we saw teams that tested in a stand that didn't have a resistor and, and discovered when they came that the fan wouldn't even, that the blade would not move with a fan. So it's important to have that resistor. Resistors have two important ratings. There's the resistance, which is which the rules require for the to be between five and twenty five ohms in the test stand, and then there's a power rating, and the rules require it to be at least a quarter watt. We recommend buying a half or one watt resistor to make sure it doesn't burn up because when the blade gets really going, that power uh, need can be even higher but you can just find these and Google for these online. So all these component pieces, understanding the wiring diagram on the left there is the schematic that's in the rules. And that can be a little bit confusing if you're not used to looking at a circuit schematic. So we have a little cartoonish view of what that looks like. So the motor, you can see that motor with a spindle wheel is attached then the, the leads are coming out of it, they go to the resistor, and then the multimeter also goes to the resistor. It's important though to recognize when you do attach or use the multimeter or attach all these components together, and again we're going to address this in our build video, but don't glue components together. All right, glue is an insulator, and so you'll want to solder or twist them together or some other kind of method, but glue is a bad method of attaching anything. So now as you come to the end of that, the, the question you face is, do you build your own or do you buy a kit? And I know building a test stand can be daunting. In our next video, we will cover a simple hack for putting one together, but there are kits available. But remember, when you choose to buy a kit, you have to verify that all those component parts are there, are there. So the blade assembly has to attach to the generator via spindle wheel and not some other method like clips or being built into the test stand. The stand has to be tall enough to accommodate your blade's assembly radius. And that, kit, that varies by division. So you can look that up in the rules to see what that is. And the circuit has to have that resistor. Now, you could add one to a kit that doesn't have one.
Thank you for joining us. Look for our next video on how to build a test stand for your own use. There are other resources available on our web pages and check out our other social media.